Welcome to Behind the Badge with your special guest, Lieutenant Williams. Your new source for all things police in the city of Fond du Lac. Good morning, Lieutenant. How's it going? Oh, it's going great. It's going great. Uh, you know, it's starting to get colder out here, so I thought I found a good topic for today. All right. What are we talking about today? Everyone's favorite winter parking ordinance. Okay. So I know it's kind of a hassle for some people and it's very confusing. And uh, in fact, sometimes I want to make sure I say the right thing. So I actually brought a cheat sheet here today. Um, so I'm going to tell you what the ordinance is and I'm going to kind of explain it to you. Um, so parking after November 15th through March 15th. So from November 15th to March 15th is restricted between the hours of 8 p.m. and 8 a.m. On even number days starting at 8 p.m., parking is restricted to the even side of the street only. So after 8 p.m., you have to park on the even side of the street. The same applies for odd number days. No permits are required. Any metered area is still restricted to 60 minutes between the hours of 2 a.m. and 6 a.m. This policy overrides all other on-street parking restrictions in place on any street where parking is allowed. So. Oh, there's a lot to unfold in that, and I just want to avoid all um, confusion on it. So number one is uh, that last part where I talk about it overrides all other parking ordinances. So basically, there'll be streets um, come to mind like Ellis Street in town, and a couple other ones, where it's restricted to park on only one side of the street. During this time, between November and March of 15th, winter parking rules override those signs. So you'll actually be parking in the no parking so side of the street, depending on which day it is. So it's the, the day that it is at um, on that day. So on 8 p.m., whatever day it is, on 8 p.m., that's the side that you're going to park on. So like today, it's the 19th, so you park on the odd side on, the, on odd days, which would be where the odd houses are as well. Right. And uh, so then people are like, well, you know, am I changing over? You know, what if I'm changing over and I don't have time? So from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., we're not ticketing for it. Gotcha. So, so that's kind of like your time to move your car, make sure it gets over. So it's, it's a good window. You got 12 hours there to make sure that your car is on the right side of the street. Okay, so it's it, it's whenever you park. or So if it, it, like today, it's the 19th, so you park on the odd side, right? Yes. And then the overnight comes. Yep. And so then, then it's an even day. So when do you have to be moved out by then? By 8 p.m. 8 so, p.m., okay. So you have that kind of that, that big window there. After you move it once, you as long as it's moved to the other side, um, by 8 p.m., you're good to go. Gotcha. The reason behind this is um, we just had a, a snowfall not that long ago, um, but when the snow plows come through, plowing is a pain. It's a real bit, It's a real hard job, and especially some of these narrower streets that we have in Fond du Lac, they can't even get a uh, snow plow through, and then they call us to have cars towed and moved, and we don't want to do that. We don't want to have to tow people's cars. So we really kind of try to get out and enforce this. Now, a lot of times we'll start out by really putting um, these warnings, these, uh, I actually have one in my hand, uh, in the radio land can't see, but uh, yeah. a green placard um, that uh, get to explains the ordinance just as I have. But uh, we try to get those out first because we don't want to uh, just, you know, cite people. But, you know, when people don't kind of get it, then we have to um, mm -hmm. go to citations. And we do have our night shift. Um, we do, you know, want them to do this because that's when the plows come out is at night. So it's usually going to be during those night tower hours between 8 p.m. and 8 a.m. when uh, the plowing is going to happen. And so we want to have people in compliance during that time. And, and this is like any night. It doesn't matter if it's snowing or not, what the weather is. Like you need to be parking on the correct side regardless. Yeah, it's kind of like we want to get people in the habit mm -hmm. before the big the big uh, right. snow falls. Now, you know, people say, well, why don't you just do it when the snow snow comes? Well, the reason is because no one will be in compliance then. Right. And, um, this is just a way that we've been doing it to kind of get people into the habit of, of doing it. So when it comes, and sometimes they're unpredictable, as you know, mm -hmm. um, we're ready for them. Definitely makes sense as we're joined by Lieutenant Williams here behind the badge on News Talk 1450 KFIZ. So... Just make sure an even day you'll park on the even side of the road with the even houses an odd day you'll park on the odd side with the odd number houses yeah not, just this show throws some confusion <laughs> at you I, I um so you might get a ticket let's say at 2 a.m um and you'd be like well this i i was on the odd side 
Well, you were supposed to be on the even that that day because we're going from the day before when you're supposed mm -hmm. to be parked. So that does get some confusion. Um, now one of my new duties is uh, to look at all uh, parking ticket um, complaints and stuff. So, um, you know, it can be fun during this time, but that's why I really want to get out in front of this to get everybody in compliance. And, and this is just every street in Fond du Lac, right? This isn't just, you know, certain streets, this is every road. Yep, every, every street that you can park on, uh, obviously, you still can't park on Johnson Street and a couple of our other busier streets. So um, that doesn't, that, that would not look good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what else are we hitting on this morning, Lieutenant well, Williams? Well, one thing we forgot to talk about is um, we are going to try something, uh, what will be next week, is that we are going to actually try to air this telecast, uh, not telecast, I guess radio cast, mm -hmm. um, on our YouTube channel. So we're trying out our YouTube channel. I think we talked about it last week. Um, so we are going to try, we are filming this right now. You can see how beautiful we look. Um, yeah, we were waving right there. You guys can't see that. See, if you tune in, you can see the wave. Um, so look forward to that. Uh, maybe I can add a couple things. Like if we talk about something, maybe I can throw in some video and videos of the actual, like we talk about the Bearcat. Maybe I could throw in a video of that. Um, big thing that's kind of going on now in the city is a theft of catalytic converters. Um, so a lot of people may, might not know what that is. It's basically this, this. They talk about in Back to the Future, right? <laughs> that movie? Yeah, the, the flux capacitor, catalytic yeah, converter, yeah, yeah maybe. just different stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or am I thinking of the wrong thing? Yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's the flux capacitor. Oh, okay, it's the flux. Okay, my bad. Yeah, so this, I'm not a car guy. I'm no, a radio guy. Me neither, actually. <laughs> so uh, it's hard for me to like you know explain that either. But uh, it's basically this large piece of metal that's uh, in the bottom of your car, and uh, I, th I think it has something to do with emissions. But it's got it's got some very uh, valuable metal in it. Okay. And people know this, so they'll they'll come with hacksaws and just like cut this off the bottom of your car, and they'll go cash it in for the the, the metal that's in it. And we've kind of it's not just Fond du Lac. It's there's been rashes of them all over uh, Wisconsin, all over the nation because of this valuable metal in it. So I just want uh, Fond du Lac to be vigilant, keep an eye out for people that are acting suspicious. A lot of times. People are parking away from the scene and then walking to the area. You know, it could be a parking lot where people are parked overnight. You know, think of your hospitals or, or businesses that are over that um, where it's not heavily patrolled and people will come and sneak. And if you see someone working on a car, you know, in a parking lot, they might not be working on a the car. They might be stealing a catalytic converter and we definitely would like to know about that so we can try to apprehend these people. You got any idea how long it takes to like knock one of those off or anything like that? I. It, it goes pretty quick. The that people that know what they're doing, um, it's pretty much like one cut and a rip and it, it's gone. So gotcha. you would actually be, I mean, we, we have video of some of these things going on. So we do have some sus suspects, but you know, there could be more than one out there and we would definitely want to keep Fond du Lac vigilant as to what's going on. Gotcha. Yep. Just one of those things, keep an eye out on. So one of the other things that I am uh, responsible for, this is a loaded, this is a loaded episode. Those are the best episodes. The more we're talking right now, that's less I have to talk later on in the show. <laughs> nice. Um, so I want to talk about abandoned vehicles because this was kind of, this came up this week uh, with some of our citizens and it was good because there is some misunderstanding out there of, of what abandoned vehicles are. Uh, there was a situation where a vehicle was, was uh, um, the driver ended up being arrested and the vehicle was left and uh, there were some people that are upset that the vehicle was not moved um, or towed right away. Well, um, the reason that we can't do that is we have to, for one, we have to have a reason. We do tow some vehicles if they're used for evidence, but if there is no evidentiary value, we don't tow the vehicle. So we have to go through what's called an abandoned vehicle process. And this is regulated by Wisconsin state statute. So it is very regulated, so we have to make sure we follow it. Um, if we don't, then we could get in trouble for taking someone else's stuff. And what the process is, is basically we first mark the cars abandoned. And some of you might see these cars parked around Fond du Lac. They got these big, bright orange stickers on okay. it that are very hard to peel off. Um, we understand that. But uh, we have these, and now uh, we mark it, and then we check it a day later. And if it has not moved in 24 hours, it gets a parking ticket for 24-hour violation. Then we check it another day. So we have to wait a whole other day. Then we take it for 48 hours, and then we wait another day, and we take it for 72-hour violation. Wow. Once it completes all that and everything is properly documented, then we can go ahead and tow the vehicle. Um, and the, what happens to these vehicles, um, if they belong to someone, then they can still claim them. They might have to pay for the tow. Um, if it doesn't belong to someone, it comes up to auction. And we're actually gonna be coming up to uh, having an auction here uh, in uh, December. Don't have the exact date right now, 
but eventually we're going to have this uh, an, an auction for these vehicles that are kind of unclaimed abandoned vehicles. The other thing is, so you're like, okay, that's pretty much four days, you know, one day to market and then three tickets. Um, the problem is, you know, officers have days off in between there, or maybe they're not working. So someone that starts an abandoned process, I might not be able to continue it until a couple days later. So these things kind of drag out over weeks. And uh, uh, people do get frustrated because they don't want to see junky cars in front of their residence. So um, be patient with us, but we have to follow state statute. And we're doing the best we can. Um, and get those cars taken care of. So, so it takes the same officer every single day to go and take that vehicle. Then they can transfer it over, okay. um, but that you know that'll depend on work load, work mm-hmm. schedule. A lot of these cars are handled by my community service officers, gotcha. who kind of work as like a part time job. So you know they'll start one, and then maybe I won't have a CSO, or over the weekend I might not have one mm-hmm. working. So there are some pauses in there, uh, but we try to be as efficient as we can. And, Especially, I mean, if someone's generating complaints, we'll try to like make sure we're right on that 24 hour mark and get it get it going through the process. But ultimately, we just want the car moved. So right. in, in during this time, we're also reaching out to the owners and saying, hey, we don't want to tow your car. Can you please move it so we don't have to do that? And you mentioned, I know you don't know the exact details right now, but that auction that's gonna be coming up in December, how often do you guys have to have auctions to get rid of those vehicles? So I'm kind of new to this gig, but it's about every three months. Okay. And uh, when we do it, it's usually when I get around 10 vehicles that we towed. Um, so we have a company that we work through. They put on the auction for us. Uh, they're the ones that tow the vehicles. And I'll be honest, more often than not, none of the vehicles go claim. So gotcha. um, if you wanted a cheap vehicle for parts or whatever, um, the auction would be a great thing. We do advertise it. And uh, probably in our next episode, I'll actually be able to give you that date of when we're awesome. gonna be doing that. So if anyone's looking for a vehicle that probably needs some repairs, I can give you all that information and maybe we'll sell one. Awesome, let's do it on air. We'll sell a vehicle in a couple of weeks. I love that.